Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is March 20th, 2020. My name is Lynn Marquardt, and I'm your host. And welcome to some nice stress relief to sewing. It has been quite a week. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but we're not going to belabor the, the point or talk about the coronavirus too much. But certainly, we do want to acknowledge it because we are all living through something that uh, we've never lived through before in our lives. So we will get through this. Let's sew. And for all of you out there, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Grab a project and let's see what we can accomplish in the next 60 minutes or maybe even more. I have a lot to do and I'm looking forward to doing it with you. So hopefully you can see that we're still here in the Simply Colorful studio. I have quilts to show you. These are not my quilts. These are customer quilts. They're amazing. I want to show you a couple of those. I also want to make a couple more squares that we made last week. The nine patches over here, way over there. Also want to do more on our machine applique, the flower quilts that we have been working on the last couple of weeks. I finished the machine applique of one, which I'll show you, and now I want to make good progress on this next one. If I run out of thread, that's going to be a bummer, but I'll tell you how I've ordered new thread. Oh, and if you want to say hi, text me, 508-341-5631, or email at lynn at simplycolorful.com, and together, we're going to have some fun. I just heard my phone ding. Of course, I'm not quite sure where it is. So, oh, you know what? It's way over there. So, I am going to go get it. Ah! We can't get it to play from the phone. Oh, no! Annie! That's Annie and Allie are out there. Hmm. I wonder why not. Maybe. Hmm. Can other people watch it from their phone or the iPad? I'm getting my phone, so hang on. Who's out there? Hi, Gay. Excuse me. <laughs> How are you? I'm so glad to see that you're out there. Oh, Annie got it to work. Hi, Annie, I'm so glad. Good, good, good. Annie and Allie and team up in New Hampshire. It was so good to see you this week. And you live in just a beautiful place. And we'll talk about that too. So just to recap, I'm going to share with you some customer quilts that have come off the machine this week. They're amazing. We're going to make a few more of the squares that we started last week. And we're going to do a lot of work on our fabric machine applique. So again, send pictures or comments or Tell me how you're dealing with this week to lynn at simplycolorful.com or my phone, 508-341-5631. And welcome. So let's, before I get sewing, because that's going to make a lot of noise, I want to show you a couple of these quilts that were made by Maureen Benjamin. This is her first wall hanging. It's a French braid pattern, and we used a modern, eccentric quilting design from Anita Shackelford. She did this one in peach and pink. Oops. Which is also stunning. And we used the same quilting pattern on that in a peach thread. This one, I'll leave this up because it's not obscuring anything, is her water droplet one. So all just amazing wall hangings that were fun to do. This is one of the two flower quilts. It's all machine applique. Ooh, don't know what that was. So... That, I'm going to give it one more press and then get it on the long arm machine and get to work on it. I just heard a ding. Um, 
Okay. Didn't, don't know what that was. Oh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to make masks. And I saw Jenny had done it. I saw um, masks were being made for a hospital, I want to say in Illinois, and, a, and some directions were sent out. So we'll do that too. Not that we're supposed to be going anywhere here in the States. We really, if, if at all possible, please stay home. So this is the one I'm working on right now. This is the other flower one. And I'm, I'm doing either a buttonhole stitch around it or a satin stitch. And it's all been uh, uh, glued down. Oh, I'm hearing dings. I love this. I'm so glad you're out there. Talk amongst yourselves. We need community now more than ever. Oh, Jean says, do you know the name of of the water droplet quilt. I do not. I can take a picture of it up close and send it to you. It may be Maureen's design, Maureen Benjamin. She's over in Framingham. I'll ask her and I'll also send you a picture of it. Ah, Annie. Annie says the quilts are amazing. And yes, we do need this connectivity more than ever, don't we? Oh, I love the dings. I missed you guys. You're welcome, Jeannie. Are you and Chris doing the, the uh, counting session? Okay, so, whoops, I guess I should thread this. I've been learning so much about using this embroidery thread. I think, was I showing you last weekend? Last week? So sulky is what I'm using, sulky thread. In the bottom, it's 100% polyester and it's for bobbin thread. So it might be a 60 weight, what does it say? Light polyester bobbin thread, size fine. They don't really say what number it is, but then for the top thread is also sulky, 40 weight, so it's thicker. And what that does is when I do the satin stitch, Having the lighter thread on the bottom of the bobbin means that the it pulls down more of the top heavier satin stitch so that the top embroidery thread is, is thicker and you don't see any of the bobbin thread, if that makes sense. Okay, anywho, that's about all I know. <laughs> so I want to hear... How pe let's do it. I'll do a little recap of the world as I know it. And then I want to hear how you all are doing coping with this, really. And and can how lucky we are to have social media and outlets like this to stay connected. So if there's one thing that I think we should all, I would like for all of us to remember at the end of the show is that we need each other to help each other get through this and um, lean on each other because this this is is a difficult situation. So to recap for anyone who might be here from outer space, the world has been exposed, humans on this world have been exposed to a new virus. It's a form of coronavirus, similar to others that we do know about already, but for which there's no vaccine, no cure, no medicine that we know of to shorten the symptoms or duration or any of that. So, and it's, it's <clears throat> and it's a, it's a tough virus in that it goes right to your lungs, It's my understanding. You don't get a lot of runny noses, supposedly. You're more likely just to, it comes on fast as a tickle in your throat, then it goes right down into your lungs. You get a fever, and hopefully your body fights it off and builds some antibodies. In the bad cases, it doesn't, and that's when you need to go to the hospital when it's really bad and have assistance with ventilators to help you breathe. 
and God willing, you make it through. So without making light of the seriousness of it, and, and I'm sure over time we will have examples of viewers who have actually know someone or have this themselves, and I don't want to make light of any of it. So <clears throat> please share your experiences. Um, we certainly are not a, a source of information on it at all. Talk to your doctors, talk to your health professionals. This is more just a place for us to gather once a week where we can try to forget what's going on around us, try to cope and be creative and express ourselves with things like fabric. So that's my hope. I love our community and I know that we've all been through a lot over the years. We do come out through it. So, and for our new sewers, like Allie, who I think is out there. Hi, Al. I'm so excited that you're enjoying sewing. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm sure Allie could teach us a thing or two about what, how she finds her information on you. There's just a wealth of information on YouTube and out there. Funny story, you know, I've been doing this machine applique. I did it on that whole quilt. And so yesterday I had my, my wrist was a little sore. I was putting it in my pocket and I thought, oh no, my jeans are tight. So I must be, when I'm putting my hand in my pocket, I must be bruising it. Honest to God, that's what I thought. And then I realized, nope, it's because I've been moving the fabric here around all these applique. So it's a sewing injury. Isn't that funny? Who's out there? Is Christine out there? Aww. Oh, Annie says, Dr. Cabot says, um, it's been so terrific for kids who are locked in to have projects to stay busy. Exactly. That's great. I hope that you're having fun. Chili wants you to say his name and mention he is cool. Hi, Chill. So congratulations, Chili, on being accepted to go to a, a very cool school. Although I must admit I don't know too much about it, but I know that your colors are maroon and that you're going to be a cougar. And I have to tell you a little bit. So Chili is my nephew and Allie's brother. And he is very cool. And... When I, went, I made him some pillowcases, and I searched high and low for maroon fabric. Number one, maroon must not be a very in color. All I could find here in my stash for maroon was this. So all it's all I could find, right, other than some really old lady maroon flowers. And I thought that just didn't, that wasn't good for chili because chili's cool. So I brought this to Joanne Fabrics. This was what, a week and a half ago when I could go there and, or I thought I could, and I couldn't find anything to match this, nothing. And then I came across the chili fabric and those dogs that were surfing. And I did, I thought, okay, chili's cool. And those dogs surfing is pretty darn cool. So that's why you got those fabrics. I hope you're well. This is a time you'll never forget, by the way. So I heard one, one news commentator was telling his children to take notes during this time. And I must admit, having lived, although the blizzard of 78, 1978, was nothing like what we're going through now. It was a, an extreme storm, right? And we were all kind of trapped in our houses for a week. And I can vaguely remember it. You know, I remember, for, for instance, 
we had a Volkswagen Rabbit, which is a small car to the ground, and it was a light green. And I can remember it being a very light green. Remember it being almost totally covered in the snow from the blizzard. And because it was light green, you really couldn't see even if there were little pieces. And I'll never forget that. That's how much snow we had. It was covering the whole car. But anyway, I didn't take notes or keep a diary. And I wish I had because it was a, an interesting time. I remember my father was home, and which, of course, he never was because he was working during the days. So and we were at school. Mom was home. Um, I can remember, you know, uh, skiing in the streets of Needham. I can, eventually I'm sure we went sledding, but I can't, and my sister was there, of course, but I wish I knew what we did. Did we play Monopoly? Did we play games? What are you guys doing to stay busy? Anyway. I'm prattling on as I do my sewing. Bottom line is, thank goodness we have hobbies. So who amongst us, oh, I'm so glad everyone's out there. Hi, everyone. Hi, KB. Woo. Um, who was doing a lot of cleaning? Uh, I thought I might. Now, granted, it's only been three days because I, I want to tell you I went to work on Monday and I want to tell you about that in a minute, but let's stick with cleaning for a minute. Who's I want to know who's been cleaning and what you've been cleaning. Email me or set yeah, email me, Lynn at simplycolorful.com. Let's see. Let me go right on here. Oh, and I also wanted to share uh, a nice email from Mark Hay from last week. Hey, hi, Linda. Linda Grant. Hi. I love seeing your pictures of what you're making, your quarantine quilts. I love that. Oh, it's loading. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, she says, hi, Lynn. I will want to get in the queue for having some quilting done after the pandemic is done. I would love to do that for you. And in fact, if you're comfortable with it, I'm happy to come. If you put it out on your steps, I'm happy to come and pick up your quilt and we can work it remotely like that. I've been doing that um, <clears throat> for, well, for, um, for Maureen here, and then I have a couple here for um, Pamela, and I did it for Sarah earlier this week, so I'm happy to do that. I would welcome it. Oh, here we go. Or maybe even drop them off sometime for you to work on while the pandemic is going on. <laughs> We're thinking alike, Linda. I guess I should read. Um, I have two of them right now, but I'm going to have more shortly. These two are approximately 40 by 40-ish. Here is my dilemma. I have this minky that I would like to use up that is just exactly the right size for the baby quilt currently laying in the pink, on the pink. If I were to sew some other fabrics along the side to make it water, wider, is that problematic for you when trying to put the quilt on the backing? No, with the caveat that, <clears throat> no, go for it. If when I do the quilting, if the top, gets a little askew. Sometimes it tends to drift a little right on my machine for whatever reason right now. It might be that the rollers are slightly askew on the, the rollers. Anyway, but I, I can compensate. <clears throat> if the fabric that you put on as extensions so that I can clip on the side and pull your quilt taut, if my top gets a little askew, I might end up quilting onto that fabric that you've added onto. So hopefully we have, you know, a half an inch of leeway on either side or something. But yes, so on so that I have between three and four inches on either side that I can pull taut and we can do that. That'd, that'd be fine. Let's go for it. Uh, the yellow gold one, and I'm going to share this with everyone in a minute. The yellow gold one on the blue minky isn't going to be a problem. Okay. The pink is long enough, just exactly the width. Okay. All right. I see it, no problem. Just so, if you if you will, 
a four inch strip of muslin on either side and we'll make it happen. Yep, no problem. That is a beauty. I love the, the pastels of that. Oh, and I love your blue one too. Ah, oh, wonderful. Um, no, it's not a big, not too much of a problem at all. Uh, I've rambled too long. No, you haven't. I love that you sent this email. Uh, Lynn, I hope you are staying inside and not packing boxes at Amazon. I haven't. I haven't been able to catch Fibercast the last couple of weeks, so I'm a little out of the loop. Be safe, Linda. Well, I'm so glad that you sent me the email. Yes, let's figure out how to get your quilts here and quilted and you, so you can get them back and binded. And bound, binded. Let's talk about Amazon. There, I said it out loud. So, <laughs> as I think people know I've been working there part-time in the mornings during the week just moving packages for exercise and for some extra spending money but mainly for exercise and for a schedule and to get with people and and it's been great well the problem is that this the warehouse I'm in a what they call a delivery station so we're that last mile before the, the packages get into the little vans that come to your door and drop off the packages. So what happens is we get a lot of packages from, from semi trucks, those fifth wheel trucks, big trucks, right? And they all come off and they go on the conveyor belt. And I think I've mentioned this before. Many people touch those packages along the way, either to put stickers on them or to divert them from one line to another, then to pull them off the line and put them on a shelf, then to take them off the shelf and put stow them into bags, then to take the bags off that and put them on uh, trolleys or U-boats, then walk them somewhere else in the, in the warehouse so that then the small van drivers, all day long, different ones, drive in and pick up their packages and load their van, and then they drive off. So there are literally hundreds of people during the day that go through this warehouse. It's a small warehouse. And I should know the square footage. It might be 50,000 square feet, might be an acre plus, a little bit more. It's not a huge one, but that's a lot of people. And you're moving fast. Oftentimes you are sweating because you're working so hard, or I am, because I'm cool like that, Jill. And I glow. And you're moving so fast, people are sneezing and coughing and wiping everything and themselves and each other, and we're all touching the same packages over and over and over again. So I think that's dangerous, given what we're living through. And I went in there on Monday. One last time, Monday was my last day of doing it, and I decided the risk was not worth it. So... The good news is so far, and, and I don't know what's going to happen. I want to keep my job. I liked it. I like it. I went home. I'm not getting paid this week. Oh. And the, of course, because I'm not working, right? But, and they've allowed us to take the rest of the month off without being penalized meaning as a hourly worker, and by the way, I'm making $15 an hour, as are everyone in that building, maybe $15.75. The drivers might be making $17 or $18 an hour. So these are, these are the lowest paid workers who are moving packages to people who are being asked to stay at home. They can't afford not to work. They need the money to buy their food, to pay their rent. So they are in danger, in my opinion. And they're, they're, they're not closing the warehouses. They're saying they've got some sanitizer around. They've got, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll say, do social distancing. And yet at the beginning of every shift, we're asked to come in close, come in close. And we all get together and we do our exercises and we're told what, what's going on for the day. Like how many thousands of packages are coming through. 
So I can't believe no one has talked about it yet. I have to believe that there are discussions going on about how essential shipping um, puzzles to shut-ins is, and I'm not I'm not downplaying at all. Um, and I did see that a few days ago they did state that they're only going to ship essentials. But meanwhile, these people who are still have to work to pay their bills are in danger. Um, and I could go on and on, but I've already said way too much. I, you know I don't get political here. I, I'm not smart enough to go and defend any of my positions, and frankly, sometimes they change uh, because I do tend to see all sides of things. And, not, and, and these aren't easy problems, believe me. Um, <clears throat> but that's Amazon. So, Linda, to answer your question, no, I'm not going in there. I am not going in through the end of March because they've said I won't get docked and I won't get fired. Come the end of March, I'm hoping they say I can still stay at home and not get fired. If they don't, I'm going to have to make a hard decision about whether to quit or go in. So stay tuned. Yeah, come back next Friday to Fibercast and, and you'll hear more. Okay. I don't know, for some of you who may not have been watching or had heard, this quilt is, is a um, memory quilt. And right now, the little flowers that I'm sewing down were made with a mother's fleece jacket a pretty rust fleece this is the fourth quilt i've made with this batch of materials so it's been fun and i still have bags of cut up clothing So Linda, that's all to say. Linda, I'm thrilled to see your email. I'd love to do your quilts. I'd love to do anyone's quilts. If you're quarantining, I know, Jean, I have your cityscape quilt here, and it's getting close to being up next. And when it is, with your approval, I'll show it on Fibercast. And um, come up with a suggestion of how we should quilt it. So I know I'm not really showing much this time around. This will be good. After I finish this, I'll go check my mail again. So send me mail. Oh, good. I see you're talking to each other. I love that. So, so good. Um, this will be good to mix it up because I find that my machine... My Bernina, which I love, gets hot when I do all of this machine quilting. So I've been oiling the heck out of it. Jean, I don't know. Do you remember we were talking about how I use different fusible materials? This one I use heat and bond, and that one I use Pell on um, peel and stitch. Like warm and natural um, steam a seam. Anyway, I love that peeling stuff. But this is working fine too. So, all that is to say, if you ever do machine applique, and you have wonder under light, go for it. Uh, it's a little bit stiffer than the steam -a seam or the Pellon light, light and steam number two. It was for sale at Joann's for 70% off. So I got five sheets for $1.39 the other day. 
So there's an example of I don't get it. Although I think it'll change soon. But those poor Joanne's employees, they're still working, right? And I, I do get it, though. I do. You've got to work to make money to pay the bills. I do. This is not... This is not fun. But what I've been heartened to see is they have a curbside service. And I'm, I ordered more thread tonight from Joanne Fabric Online. And you got 25% off your first order. But I have not received a text saying they've received it or that my order is ready for pickup. So I'm not liking that. But um, I'm hoping to be able to go pick it up tomorrow morning at the curb. They have curbside pickup. Oh, and I think I just ran out of bobbin thread. Let's see. How could that be? Hasn't done all that much. Hmm. That came undone. Hmm. <laughs> Do my taut. So Bob has stayed busy all week working on trim here at the house. That's been good. Keep going back up here. doing I think it's on Sunday there is a quilt along who's doing that the quarantine quilt along let me go get the information that Jean resent to me oh Annie says Joanne's was great with curbside it was just like takeout food oh that's good to know thank you that's great to know and that's up in New Hampshire so Maggie, if you're up there, that might be of interest. Who's that? Oh, Annie's order was ready in 30 minutes and she received an email, not a text. So maybe I have an email. Let me go check Yahoo. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just shopping online. Without regard to the people on the other end. That's the thing is, I had no appreciation for how much work is done for those of us who are lucky enough to sit in our and do our office work. It's just, where have I been for 50 years? Oh, but here's something from Amazon Daily Attendance Check-In. Oh, I'll read this to you. It's a complimentary check-in centralization team. We wanted to reach out to you because we've noticed you have not been present to your recently scheduled shifts. I have written in, by the way, and said I won't be there. We would like to check in and see how you're doing. Okay, you have so many international followers. How are things in other countries? Any tips for us? Ah, good question, Jean. So that's a question for those of you out there who are weeks ahead of us in dealing with this pandemic. Nothing in my email from Joanne.
That was the international followers question. I'm not sure we have any viewers from Italy, for example. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Welcome. Yes, Jean, so I hear Jean told you that I was on early. I'm psyched. I hope you're doing well and getting some sewing in. I'm finishing up my memory quilts, these particular memory quilts. I have a couple of quilts that KB sent in that I should be able to share next week. Or maybe the week after. If everyone wants, actually, let me just check this. You can get some materials um, while I keep doing this for our face mask. I think you need something like eight by six or nine by six inches. Let me just, you need two pieces, one out of cotton and one out of cotton flannel, and then two pieces of elastic about seven inches each. Of course, I should have just kept it up because I, I looked at it. So, yeah. Oh, it came over at Facebook. It doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. Get a get two pieces of fabric if you want to sew along with me in a minute to make your own face mask. Two pieces of fabric, let's say nine inches by six inches. Ah, Chris says she misses me. I miss you too. This is crazy. What are some scheduling things people have been doing? Or, or if anyone, who out there is still working outside the home? Let's put it that way. And why? Oops. Okay, now I'm just going along the edge here. Next time I do this, this quilt for a customer, I am going to factor in the cost of thread. I didn't think of that when I priced this one out. But you know what? You learn. Okay, so I just did. That stock. We still have quite a ways to go, but at least it's all ironed down in the right place. That took a long time today. Okay, let's put this up. Let's, let's look at it and see what it looks like. Send in pictures of what you've been working on. Or better still, post them. So just did that one. I put this white here because it was their mother's jeans. And it's doing exactly what I worried that it would do, which is it's whiter than the background. So it looks like it's a hole or something. I'm going to try and... I don't know, outline it in 
black probably eventually and hopefully get it not to look so stark but we'll see okay let's make a mask oh annie sent us a oh thank you oh wow taiwanese doctor shares how to properly make diy cloth face mask complete with air filter Ooh, let's see what that's all about here we go. Time, okay. How do I get the air filter, I wonder? Uh, This is pretty funny. First, it says, pick a cloth that you like, find a masterful tailor, and give them the dis a disposable mask as a sample for the size and dimensions for the cloth mask, which is so smart. Exactly. Um, there's an opening in his cloth mask for a filtering material to fit inside. Uh, ooh, for Chen, he used a wet tissue, but he dried it before putting it in the mask. Okay, here we go. Everyone ready? Let's get our materials done. Oh, so, and maybe I didn't pick right, but when you're picking this, think of who the mask is for. for I was going to make it for myself. I'm going to make Bob one too for when we go to the store, the food store. And I was thinking, think about who it's for and what colors they are and what will look good. So I think I'm going to go, and then I thought, well, St. Patrick's Day and spring, and so I picked these greens, but I think a more teal green will look better with my eyes. So let me keep looking here for a second. Hmm, but I don't, I want it to be, oh, and maybe it'll have to go with my, with my outfits. Hmm, I hope you're laughing right now. We have to have some levity in this whole thing. Hey, Carol, hi. No, you're not late, I'm early. Thanks for joining. Carol says, hello, Lynn and fellow Fibercasters. So late to the party, I missed the memo. We'll watch you tonight and catch up on what I missed later. Stay safe, happy sewing, Carol O. Aw, I'm glad you're out there. I hope that you are able to be home. I think your schools are closed, right? Hopefully. You don't have to go in. Administration doesn't have to go in. Oh, that's pretty. I think I'll use that one. But that's not six inches wide. Hang on. Oh, that's pretty too. Okay, that's big enough. And then, well, this, this could be for Bob. No. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. I think we'll do with those. We're making face masks. Nothing new. I saw Jenny Doan has a tutorial on it. Um, I have latex gloves for when we have to go to the food store, but I didn't have a mask, and I thought, what the heck? Because I, I walked around with my... my um, Oh, you know, you get out of practice talking. That's another thing this isolation is not going to be good for. But um, I pulled up my coat. And I know this is not flannel on the inside, but that's okay. This is cool. Okay, how big is that? So that is one, two, three. Okay, let's do nine by six. Allie, are you making scrunchies? 
Allie, Allie. Folks out there, I think you may remember Allie. She's been on the show in the summer times and will be hopefully again this summer because we're all, God willing, coronavirus willing, we will all be together this summer. One, two, three, four, five, five and three quarters. See, this is where you just make do with what you've got. So because my top piece, I can't get six inches, I'm going to go five and three quarters. So here's five and three quarters by... go 10. No, I can't because I, I don't have enough under there. So by nine. Circle this around so you don't have to move the fabric, which is always nice. There. Okay. And the other ingredients we need for our little mask is some plus some elastic. Either eighth of an inch flat, which I think is what I'm going to do, or here is some, it's the rounded kind. I don't know what's that, what's that, what that's called. Okay. And let's say, they said seven inches. And then, I wonder how we're going to make it. Oh, we can tie a knot in it, in the elastic. If it doesn't fit, if it's too big, we'll tie a knot. So that'll be fine. Okay. So let me take my embroidery thread out and get some regular Aurifil in there. I'm going to do my gray. Allie, how is threading the machine going? Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Allie got a new machine. She got a new Janome C30, which is an awesome machine. What I really like about those Janomes is, and I think I've mentioned it on this show, my Bernina only has three feed dogs on the bottom to pull the fabric through. That Janome and any Janome I've seen has five feed dogs on the bottom. So it's much better at pulling the fabric through and getting you good, precise sewing. It's a great machine. Okay. Okay, now I have my fabric. I've got it on two. So now I'm going to put right sides together. And I'm going to sew this elastic onto the side of one of them. I'm going to catch it here. And I'm going to go back and forth on it multiple times. Do you remember when Allie showed us how to make scrunchies this summer? That might be the last time I used elastic. Which is crazy, because elastic is a good thing. Right. 
course, these are going to be washed every time we use them and then or thrown out. Not to even begin to talk about the fact that I can't believe we're having to do this. It seems surreal sometimes what we're going through. And the illness looks terrible. That's what's scary. Who's there? <laughs> I love that. Carol. That's so smart. She says, is there a 20-minute simply colorful jingle we can sing while we wash our hands? We have to get the band on that. So speaking of which, the band is not meeting tonight. How's that for prudent? That was big for them, too. My husband plays in a band downstairs, and his friends come and play with him, and they've been doing it for more than 20 years because he was doing it more than 25 years. He was doing Okay, so now I should, before I do this... I should say what I'm doing. So I've just put the elastic onto one side, inside. Now we're going to make a sandwich with the other side. And we're going to sew it like a pillow. So we're going to start about two inches here on one side, go all the way down the, the side, go all the way across the top, the other side, and on the bottom, go another two inches and stop. Then we'll turn it inside out, and we will have caught the elastic. And we'll make more passes, more seams after we turn it. And we'll take some tucks. And you can do this any of a number of ways. Marquet's garden. As soon as I'm done with this little strip. Wow, where does the time go? It's almost 60 minutes. I'm going to keep going for a few more minutes. Okay. Oh, my order at Joanne's is ready. Woo! -hoo! I can pick it up within the next three days. Isn't that cool? Okay. So, where is Marquet's note? Marquet. It's here. It's not too far back either, I don't think. Oh, we should have some more poems. I'm going to reach out to Jane Bryant and see if she has some poems. I guess I could go... We're getting there. Well, I can't seem to find it, Marquet. But while I can't find that, I did find information about the GE Designs newsletter and her upcoming quarantine quilt, mystery quilt. It's not a mystery quilt. She sent out the pattern. It's a quilt along this Sunday, the 22nd. Oh, it's taking a while to load, which reminds me. You know how I talk about different things at different times and I go from here to there everywhere? Someone <laughs> someone looked at a video, the Good Night Irene video from three years ago, 
and she wrote just a very, I don't know if you're out there, Mandy, I think is your name. Um, and it was very polite, but her comment was, did you ever think about staying on task and telling us about the pattern? I thought that was kind of cute. And she's right. I'm always all over the place. Okay, GE Designs, hang on. It's loading. I'm sorry, everyone. It's been the darndest thing to, because it said, okay, here we go. Quarantine quilt along March 22nd. So go to GE quilt designs.com live on Facebook. Come sew the new pattern Elvira has designed. Oh, no, I guess it's called Elvira. Free for just two days. Join Gundren and quilters from all over the world. And then um, what's not clear to me is where we sign in. They said to request the newsletter, which I did. But I haven't found where to sign in yet on Sunday. But, okay, hang on. I just saw something. GE Designs. Okay, Quarantine Quilt Along on our Facebook page, GE Designs. So go to that Facebook page, I guess. I'll be sending out a newsletter this weekend with details. And that's that. Okay, let's finish our, our face mask. So we've just sewn around this. And you know what? I'm even going to sew it twice down the side so that I catch that elastic twice. Let me get this going. Okay. Oh, I love this Joanne's pickup thing. That's going to change the job at Joanne's, too. Can you imagine if these stores end up being like pickets? Pick and stage stations. <laughs> Who knew I was into all of this logistics stuff? Although I must admit that in school, I did always love queuing theory <laughs> and linear programming because there's quite a math program behind getting the right product to the right people at the right price at the right time. Chili, cool chili is going to solve that. I can see you working on that kind of problem. I suspect chili is no longer with us. If you are, shout out. Okay, so we have the start of a mask. Now what I want to do first is change my foot and put a nice neat edging on it. And then I want to pucker the sides so that it fits better around my face. No, I'm switching from foot 34D to 10D. I like the D feet because they have dual feed 10D. Okay. So let's... 
first iron this. So, you know, if you have a loved one, well, we should talk about this. What are you doing in the community to reach out to people? Like, have you been contacting neighbors, elderly people in your neighborhood? I have to do that. I've been in touch with one neighbor. That's it. But I need to say hi to the Phipps across the street. Um, call, check in on family members. Maybe a little more frequently than you have been. Just because, like our governor, Governor Baker here in Massachusetts said, this is a marathon. Okay. Oh, I love how things iron up. Now, I'm going to put my needle... Three over to the left. Okay. One of my fears, and I do realize in the scheme of things, this is not all that important, but one of my fears is that my sewing machines break and I need equipment and parts. I have extra parts for my long arm, what I think would break, like the check spring and bobbin. But what can you do? That's that is the least of my worries, isn't it? You know, people are laughing about the rush on toilet paper. And I can see it's kind of funny. But I must admit, you know, I don't think it's all that funny that people are buying it because you it is something you definitely do need. Am I wrong? I had a friend who was on Facebook talking about which books, pages of books he would sacrifice. If, if necessary. That was kind of funny. I'm doing a second. Seam all the way around. Oh, and it's not very straight. Okay. So there we go. We have, we've made that. Let's see if, okay. I may have to tie that up. What I want to do now is just take a couple of tucks on each side, going the same way, so that the end is probably, well, let's see, it's about three inches long. Okay, I'm just transferring it over here, and then we're just gonna sew right along the edge.
So see that? Can you see that? So one is tucked. I bet you can't because I'm far away here. Now we're going to tuck the others, making sure the tucks go in the same direction. And so that it measures about three inches, right? Hello. Oh, Carol asks how the long arm division is doing. Great. We're busy. I, sh I showed um, Maureen Benjamin. She brought over seven quilts, I think. And I showed three of them tonight. But it's great. Bring them on over. Okay. Oh, it's, look at that. It could be either side. There. All right. That's how you could make a mask. What else do we want to do? <laughs> um. <laughs> Chili watched half, which was good. Amen. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We're almost done. Um, let me just check mail to make sure. Oh, I didn't miss anyone out there. Marque, again, thank you for sending information about your garden. I will try to find it for next week. Hi to everyone who's been on, on YouTube. I love it. And I think we've caught everyone. So... In conclusion, we are all going to have a lot of time on our hands, God willing. God willing, we feel well enough to sew or to do what we love. So um, keep on doing it. Keep on doing what you love. If you don't love this, do something else. Take care of those you love. Tell them you love them. And I think that's, that's about it. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you ne here next week. I think I'm going to start earlier because, uh, truth be told, it's usually my bedtime now a little bit earlier. I don't know. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. I'm so glad you're out there. Cherish and Carol and Linda and KB and Allie and Gay and... Susan, and I'm sure a Peggy, I'm sure I've forgotten many of you. I'm just so thankful that you're out there. Let's be kind to each other. Have fun. See you next week. Oh, Allie and Annie, Dr. Annie and Chili. Bye.